First of all, I don't want to be a permanent critic. So I say that many things have improved in the way the GST Council functions. Uh, after my repeated requests, I'm sure others did too, so I'm not taking credit for it. But for the first time, at least since I became a member, we had almost a two-week advance notice of the meeting. Uh, though the location changed and the uh, agenda, as usual, came in bits and pieces and very late in the day, uh, the, the direction is towards the right uh, kind of improvement in many ways. The, mm. the, um, the many groups of ministers, the, the what we would call otherwise call committees or subcommittees are doing good work. I have not yet seen one uh, group of ministers report that has not been appreciated by everybody because these are complex issues and handled well. So there are many positive things to say. But there are a few profound issues that I've been talking about since I became a member. And five years into the GST, we are still no closer to resolving them. If this is cooperative federalism, how is it that some decisions are taken unilaterally by the union government and some decisions only are referred to the council? Hmm. For example, the union government has decided to extend the cess till 26. I'm not sure that it was ever brought to GST Council. Truly, it should have been if it was cooperative federalism. Mm. The same way, the issue of compensation was discussed, I think, in September. No resolution was made inside the meeting. And then once outside, the Honorable Union Finance Minister said, it will not happen. Mm. That was not a consensus, as best I can tell, inside the meeting. Again, this time it was brought. There was no consensus on anything. She gave everybody the right to talk. It was not a listed agenda item. So clearly, without her and the conveners, uh, which is the Revenue Secretary, Mr. Bajaj's consent, the topic could not have been taken for discussion. Hmm. And yet, at the end of the discussion, we all walked away with no no resolution, no clarity. no. Hmm. And this is not atypical. It's, it's not always, but it's not atypical. There are other instances where I can think of where we talk and then no decision is taken and we just walk away. And so this is not healthy, in my opinion, right? I'll go even further. If it is truly cooperative federalism, how is the agenda set 100% by the union government and uh, the convener? Hmm. Surely the convener should take inputs from people like us, uh, from the members, and say, do you want anything listed on the agenda? You know, a good, yeah. well-functioning, professional organization, three weeks before the meeting, would send a note to all the members and say, we are planning to have a meeting roughly this time. This is the rough agenda we're thinking about. Is there you know, anything else you would like added to this? Hmm. And then collate an agenda that include the input of many members, hmm. and then send it out. OK. Doesn't happen? Never mind. At the last minute, you say, any other business, like they did today, and take it. But that should be discussed to a conclusion, not left suspended in the end. Neither did they say yes, nor did they say no. Now, the last point I want to make is, were the union government to come out sometime in the next three, six months and say, actually, we're going to reinstate some form of compensation for the next couple of years or three years or five years or whatever. Mm. How is that cooperative federalism? How is that within the GST Act? That means they get to decide all the important things and all the complex kind of negative things get to be decided by the GOM and the council. That's not the, 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 the nature of either the GST Act or but of center, but center says that states are equal members. But, but how does it but, happen? Yeah, but yeah. where is that equity? Is something that uh, so is getting violated. You took the words out of my mouth. <laughs>